So being one of the last uh, presenters, I thought quite a bit about how to be able to go and tell a story that adds to a lot of the really, really good stuff that's been said, because there have been a lot of coverage around use cases, um, ROI, things of that nature. So what I'd like to, to spend um, about 10 minutes, and then I'll, I'll let in a, a guest speaker from Accenture, um, talk about is this notion of um, AR and um, the connected worker within the broader context of what, what we call the, the digital enterprise. And we're going to go and talk to that within the context of Upskill's nine-year business, you know, basically having done exactly that, bringing the digital enterprise to the hands-on workforce. What digital enterprise means isn't, um, it's not necessarily even super fancy IoT, artificial intelligence. Um, it's, it's actually things that a lot of people would consider to be industry 3.0 kinds of technology, ERP, some elements of uh, process automation systems and things of that nature, and how that impacts the, the, the global industry. So let's talk about what the hands-on workforce and the digital enterprise kind of interact today. And um, if you've been listening to even half of the, the sessions early on, um, the simple answer is that it really doesn't. You've got work instructions and process details that are stored in all of these three-letter acronym systems as well as a whole bunch of legacy systems that are given its own three-letter acronyms. And um, so that's all digital information that's stored there. And then what's happening is that that information delivery is being brought into the, the frontline worker or the hands-on worker, as we call it, um, into you know, paper forms, um, PCs on carts, best case, smartphones and tablets. And then um, to add insult to injury, after that, that hands-on worker finishes the task, has to go back to that same machine, type all that information back in. So this digital to analog and then the digital transition is the disruption of that, that digital continuity for hands-on work. And it's really, really inefficient. And uh, it, it's susceptible to creating lots and lots of errors as a part of the, the process. Upscale's mission is to be able to go and eliminate that transition um, as much as we can. How do we do that from a product principles perspective? Skylight's uh, an industrial AR platform. You've heard that a lot by now. Um, and our mission is to be able to go and build for everyday hands-on work. That, 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 may not, that nuance may not necessarily come through, but there are a number of different use cases um, that are around the HMT that involve uh, exception-based kinds of scenarios, things like remote assistance, training, you know, other, other tasks that, that, that aren't used as a part of the everyday work. And, and it's that problem that we're trying to go and solve for. And we bend this into people that are making, moving, and maintaining products. Whether or not that product is a, a can of soda going all the way into a, um, an airplane, it really doesn't matter. The fundamental roles, fundamental tasks that each of those people have to do is exactly the same. And because we're human-centric, we all are, I'd like to think, um, there's a, a great amount of feature and UX emphasis in being able to go and enable that hands-on worker to make quicker and more accurate decisions. That's what this is all about. AR, everything else that's out there, connected worker, voice technology, digital assistance, it's all about being able to go make faster decisions. And you do that by being able to go and leverage the hundreds of millions of dollars, sometimes billions of dollars, that these uh, large businesses have made over a couple of decades of um, their, their existence in building out that digital enterprise infrastructure, all of that process information that it resides, and being able to go and do that using APIs and other ways to be able to go and extend the reach of um, the, the real HMT to the, to the hands-on workforce. And then, of course, and I think I've heard this said before, not everybody is cloud ready. Um, it would make our life easier as a software company, but the reality is that it's not. So you have to be able to go and deliver and, deliver and deploy anywhere. And I'll unpack, it's not just about delivering the software, but anywhere doesn't mean on-prem, hybrid, um, and uh, multi-tenant cloud environments, but it's also the ability to go in and deliver uh, the solution anywhere in the world. And this is a, a key role that our partners in Accenture uh, help us be able to go and do. So again, whittling it down to some of the, the functionalities that are, that are actually used, um, 
we, we have a belief that the, the six high-level functionalities are some of the most commonly used building blocks to be able to go and build an augmented reality application on HMTs today. And, and not, not surprisingly, that's exactly what we support. And then being able to go and deliver that across a number of different devices. I love the fact that um, Sanjay earlier today talked about the fact that RealWorld is committed to being able to go and support um, an HMT device for five years. So that's, that's, a, that's a big deal for the enterprises. If you take that same idea, though, HMT isn't necessarily going to be in every single use case. And there's going to be an HMT1 to HMT2 upgrades that happen. How do enterprises be able to go and maintain the, the, the investments that they made into uh, system integration and a lot of the investments that tie into that digital enterprise? Again, that's the problem that we're looking to go and solve. Some of the customer testimonials, um, IT and operations in our world are equal stakeholders. Uh, if you don't have engagement from one from the other, you're not going to get very far in terms of the deployments. And you've got someone who's on the IT supply chain of a life sciences customer, Fortune 100 company, that's saying that you know, uh, smart glasses can go and take us as a business to improve productivity, improve quality, and be the connected workforce of the future. And then you've got someone who's in operations at an aerospace company, um, Boeing, that's saying that you know, this is a step function change. So this is a big deal, but engagement on both sides is critical to be able to go and actually roll this out. Next thing is about how do you go and actually make this all work and deploy this? We've, we've heard about deployment. Um, there are a lot of special skills that are needed today, realistically, to be able to go and deliver augmented reality applications out into the field. Um, one of the things that we are trying to, to do as, a, as an ecosystem, I'm not even going to take credit just as upskill, is to be able to go and make deployment of these uh, solutions easier. And that means being able to go and deploy applications that are static, um, you know, fixed workflows that you're creating using a drag and drop interface, or creating a connection to, a dynamic connection to your digital tools and systems that allow you to be able to um, push information to and from the worker. So uh, Russ Fidel, in the previous um, session, talked about the data opportunity and analytics and how, how the, the, the information that's captured from the point of work as hands-on workers are performing their tasks, how that makes the rest of the digital enterprise more intelligent. This is a really unique opportunity and, and one that I don't, want to, I don't want you to leave this room without appreciating the benefit of what this can bring. This could be much, much larger than remote assistance, step-by-step -step work instructions, things of that nature. If you have information that you can go and capture by, by this connected worker fabric that you're creating with uh, Realware, Upskill, Accenture, you're able to go and collect that data and associate that with the rest of the digital investments that you've made to be able to go and plan more effectively, train more effectively, work and collaborate uh, even more efficiently. And this is a teaser into um, my, my talk tomorrow at Augmented World Expo, which really talks about the opportunity around the qualitative aspects of what this brings into the Industry 4.0 workforce. But you, as you can see, you've got the, the gray kind of digital investments that people are already making. And then the blue is what's added as a result of what we're able to collectively bring uh, to, the, to the industrial enterprises. So let's talk about how this actually maps to um, customer use cases. Bureau Veritas is a uh, multinational technical, um, technical inspection and certification company um, that does third-party audits of technologies. And through a, uh, an inspection and audit use case, they've been able to leverage Skylight on the real HMT to be able to drive a 200% increase in expert utilization. And you know, on the, the first service technician visit that they were able to go and save, they paid for the solution right off the bat. Very, very powerful. So this is an example of the, the quantitative benefit and a customer that, uh, that we're talking about. Flipping into the qualitative benefit, we have a Fortune 100 life sciences company that also invested in Skylight and the HMT to be able to um, more effectively uh, disseminate expertise and knowledge across multiple operations. And um, that's also resulted in, as a bonus, higher plant uptime 
But equally as importantly, they made the bet early on to be able to say that this is something that they have to do because the qualitative benefits of creating that connected workforce and building that technology foundation to, to start making their workforce um, become more literate in digital technology, let alone AR, uh, is something that's critical for their daily operations. And this is a good case of someone who, absent the ROI, made an intuitive investment to be able to jump into this technology because they fundamentally believe that they need to do this. If they don't do this, they know all too well, then they're going to be a, a statistic of many Fortune 500 companies which don't last any more than 30 or 40 years. And how this deployment really works, as much as we'd love to be able to go and have our customers start at the initial deployment into expansion, the reality is that a lot of people start at the POC and pilot stages. And as the ecosystem is growing, one of the things that everybody is starting to do is to offer shorter kind of the timelines that you can see in that gray box at the bottom. And a lot of that is being enabled on and unlocked by um, the use of self-service technology. And this is one of the major milestones that we've achieved as a, as a business is to deliver a, a multi-tenant SaaS, true self-service offering. From a product perspective, that's that. But we also have all of the, the product um, documentation and help materials to be able to go and move things along. But you know, the, the timelines at the bottom are certainly kind of in the best case scenarios. Um, you know, we certainly want to make sure that you're guided along the, the right kind of the scenario. But if you look at the bottom, a lot of the times, this should be the benchmark that you should uh, look at your own deployments in. If you're late, chances are there's some sort of a process bottleneck that's slowing you down, and you need to identify what those are. So let's talk about our partnership with Accenture. Um, with that, I'd like to uh, invite Guillaume, XR and wearables manager at Accenture, to come and speak about it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So yeah, Accenture is, as most of you know, uh, a gigantic consulting company uh, in technology. We, we have partnered with um, Upscale for no, over a year. And previous to that, we used to actually have our own, um, our own solution. We have worked with Upscale, and we have decided to remove our own solution and put forward Upscale and Skylight. Um, that was really a, a turning point in the, in, into the, the journey that we were doing together. We have several uh, what we call Industry X Center that are all over the world across geographic location. And for the past 12 months, Upskill and Accenture have worked with more than 10 clients to include uh, in 15 countries and to deploy uh, this partnership. Okay. And so exactly what Jay, I just want to echo what Jay was saying earlier about being human-centric. Technology often has a bad rap about pushing the human out of the equation. And that's really what we want to come out of, get away from. It's really bringing the human back into the technology. We are not going to replace anyone. We want to make the service-based industry more competitive by bringing connectivity, being the workforce and the digital enterprise. And so really my, really my last statement is, do not fight it, work with it. Do not dissociate human and technology. Just make the human more aware of the data around you. And I think to, to add to that in closing, what, uh, what Accenture brings to the table is uh, a unique value proposition where we've talked a lot about hardware and software as if that's the, the whole solution that's delivered, uh, that's required to be able to go and deliver this kind of digital transformation that's driven by hands-free technology. The reality is that um, there are multiple kind of stages of your exploration where expertise as well as the ability to go and do, um, conduct and support global delivery with folks like Accenture ends up becoming kind of a key cog in your ability to go and accelerate to deployment, which has been the theme of uh, the summit after all. So Guillaume, thanks, thanks again. Thank Andy, um, thanks for having Upskill. Very much appreciate it. Thank you.